Hey guys, Team Soccer is here with a Satellar Knight deck profile. Uh, this is one of my favorite decks to play. I played at my first YCS, so let's just get into it. I, we play 3 to Neb. Whenever it's summoned, uh, you get a search. So you s usually search Altair or what, whatever you really need, but usually Altair because Altair is the reborn and it brings it back for another search. It's a, everything in the deck's a hard once per turn. Next, we got 3 Altair. Uh, when it's summoned, you could special summon a uh, Satellar Knight in defense. So you uh, special summon to Neb, get the search. But then you can only, uh, uh, what's it called, attack with Satellar Knights that turn. And so that kind of sucks. But it's one of the hard souls of the deck because sometimes you could like reborn Vega or something. Or, you know. Oh, pfft. sorry guys. Next we got three uh, Unokai. Basically this guy's the foolish burial of the deck. So what he does is you summon him, you send the neb, and so you know you can reborn him with Altair or something along those lines. Next we got one Vega. I know that uh, one Vega is a bit weird in the main deck. A lot of people I see run two, but I've play tested this deck a lot, and I've never really seen people need another. Like I've never have. Uh, the only reason I play tested one really, I was always just gonna put two in here, is because I just didn't have a second one. And by the time the second one came, I just liked the deck how it was. And I was like, you know what? There's no reason. We also play one Alstrom because time rules kind of suck. But sometimes it's like you don't really need a search or you don't really need this. And when you summon him, all he does is really... He's a burn for a thousand on summon. He's kind of dumb. Uh, there's actually a Satellanite burn deck profile if you guys want to see that. But I don't really like playing Satellanites that way. I just like having him because a little bit of damage here, it adds up. You know, everyone striking and warning and everything. I don't know, I like it. We play the two honest. Um, I thought about three. I think it's a three. <laughs> I actually can't remember. But two is just good. Uh, you know, it's nice to have a monster. Uh, you know, nice to have a little bit of defense. You already, you guys know what else. And then for hand traps, we play three Ash Blossoms. Yes, these are secret first ed. Uh, sorry, I have to gloat a little bit. But uh, especially since the super's been confirmed, which kind of sucks, but... Uh, basically the reason I only play this and not like Ghost Ogre is because I want to negate their searches. I want to like negate, you know, their foolishes. I want to negate their setup. If they get an effect off, there's so many other ways in Satellar Knights to negate and destroy it on the field that Ghost Ogre would just be useless. Like I would, I did not even consider Ghost Ogre. Uh, we're also here with my boy Peter. You know, he's silent as fuck like usual. Uh, we got Raigeki, Dark Hole, uh, Reborn. And Rhoda. Um, I like the Dark Hole and I, uh, I usually will side them out. But I like the board clear. I really do. Because it's all about going for damages and having uh, board control. And I, usually I'll side, side out the Dark Hole. But this is just so I see destruction in my hand. That's why I play both in the main deck. Uh, Reborn's great. And then Rhoda's, you know, everything's a warrior basically besides... Honest and Ash. Sorry about the backer I noticed, by the way, guys. Then we play two Duality as our last spell. The reason I like to play Duality is because you will have hands where you won't really exactly see a monster, or you won't see what you need. You want to have uh, what's called Satellar Knight. Usually uh, Unokai or Deneb, preferably. So if you don't see those guys, you, you know, but you have Duality, you could fish it out. Um, I only play two because I don't want to see it very often. This is just so... You know, if I get that instead of a Satellar, maybe I can grab a Satellar and deck then. Next, we got three Satellar Nova Alpha. The card's fucking busted. Uh, you tribute one Satellar Knight card, and you can negate a spell, trap, or monster effect. It's pretty insane, but not only that, but you also get to draw one card. So, what I'll usually do in an ideal hand is I'll summon a normal summon a Denab. And then, what get my search for Altair. Then, set the Nova. And then, when it, they uh, activate something... Uh, dumb. I'll Nova negate, draw a card. Let's just say it's like Rota or something, for example. And then I have the Neb in the grave for Altair, so it's great. Card is a must of at three. It is one of the best traps. It makes this deck a lot more viable than it should be. Next, we got three Call of the Haunted. Um, I know people think Back to the Front and Dra and Oasis are good. I like Oasis. Back to the Front's okay. But I just like Call of the Haunted because usually you're going to be resolving this during end phase. Uh, so, and plus you want Call of the Haunted for Honest. Like, I've been in that situation before. Uh, it's up to you what you want to play and how much Reborn Traps you want to play in Satellar Knights. I think 3 
is fine. I've never really needed it because it can clog even at three. Uh, back a long time ago in like, I guess, 2015, um, 2016, maybe. No, yeah, 2015. People used to run three Oasis, three Call of Haunted. I just don't see it necessary anymore. Maybe in the future. And the reason you also play Call of Haunted is because you could balance it back with Trevor. And there's a lot of other stuff you could bounce back, like uh, Phoenix Chain. Now, the reason I played Phoenix Chain in 2018, uh, before you dislike the video, is because you'll activate it, it'll negate. And even if they tribute it or, you know, they do whatever the uh, uh, they want with the monster, XYZ, it just becomes dead on the field. But then if you make Triver and you bounce everything back, you basically got the Phoenix Chain again. Same with Call of the Haunted and all that. So it's fantastic. That's why I play two Phoenix Chain. I've thought about three. I'm um, play testing this deck a little bit. I also play uh, two Mind Crush in the main deck. Um, the reason I play this is because, well, first of all, I don't know where my third Phoenix Chain is. But uh, it's just because you always know your opponent's hand, I feel, in, t in this you know current meta. And I've always never, I've always resolved this and gotten something good out of it. Because, you know, in 2018, you're. They're resolving, they're searching spells and traps. So, like, you can get those out of their hand. That's fucking great. As, but, and you also get to see their hands, so you know exactly what you need to play. You know if it's okay to Ghost Ogre. You know if they have Ash. You know what you need to do to play around it. So, that's what I really like about Mind Crush, is it's like a hand reveal. And that's... Unless it's... um Unless the card's limited. If the card's limited, like, you take out Monster Reborn, for example, then you don't get to see their hand. But if you take out, like, a three of, like, I don't know, Lair of Darkness, let's just say, they Terraforming Lair of Darkness... Uh, then we play, you know, uh, Warning and a Judgment. I thought about Strike, but I just uh, I just feel like since this is a trap-heavy uh, deck, we don't just have to r run the Psalm Trios. Two Torrential. Um, all the uh, XYZs float that you make. So when you Torrential the board and you have, I don't know, let's just say Deltros on the field, it blows up. You can re you can get a Altair from your deck immediately after um, Torrential resolves. And then Reborn of Deneb, get a surge, and you could do that on your opponent's turn, so not only do you have two monsters on the field still, but you wipe their board, and you get a surge. Uh, so, you also blow up Trevor. They they all float, but, well, the main ones do. Compulse, Bottomless, Trap Tricks, Trap Pull, Nightmare. Um, this card comes in clutch a lot more, especially with, um, except we do have a lot of passive effects in this meta currently. But I still really like it. Uh, you, could, you could stop the searchers. That special summon, all that. And then we, for our last card, we play Storm Mirror Force. It's in there. I like it because usually you don't play attacks. You know, we don't... In Yu-Gi-Oh, you're not going to be playing Mirror Force or anything. You know, Dimensional Prison. You know, we don't live in that time anymore. But I was just like one in the main deck. It's worked out well. But I was thinking about taking it out. So, for the third Phoenix Chain. So, just treat it as a Phoenix Chain. Uh, for the extra deck, you really do have to play through Trevor. Um, I know usually three of them XYZ boss monsters unheard of, but for Trevor, it's like you're going to be dishing him out every single turn and he floats. So what you want to do is you don't want to have two because then they can get, they can grab it out, the sec negate the second one out, and then you have to play with only two. I've played with two before and I've always liked the third. Sometimes you could just win the game with one or two, but I've needed the third a good amount of times and I'm happy it's here. You know, you can also bounce him back if you make a double Trevor, but you know... Master Rule. Uh, then uh, we got two uh, Satellar Knight Deltros. Um, actually, I forgot to explain Trevor. I'm very sorry about that. But when you make him, he actually bounces everything on the field. So he's Black Rose, but for bouncing. So that's how you get the Phoenix Chain. And that's how you get the... Um, what's the other card? Call of the Haunted. So, and then you can attack for directly. And then you detach and you can pick a card from your opponent's hand. So it's pretty good, unless, you know, you're playing against Danger Beast, then he's, you don't use that effect. The two Deltros, you detach and you pop a card for him. And when he leaves the field, you special from deck. With Trevor, you special summon from uh, Graveyard. They don't tend to matter, but if you want a deck thing, I guess it's up to you, depending on your resources. They all take uh, three level four monsters, by the way. That's why you play Dark Teller. He has a lot of text. Just ignore that. All you really need to do is you make him if you just have Altair and Deneb, and then you discard a card, and then you can overlay a Deltros on him. And then it's like three materials, so it's fine. So this guy's uses a shortcut in case the third summon gets negated, all of that stuff. It usually just doesn't happen with me. Uh, usually you put four monsters on the field because you'll 
I'll turn to Neb on their turn if I call the Haunter or something. And then you'll, uh, what's called, search Altair or like another useful card and then you'll go into level 3. So you don't go into Dark Teller too much, but I like him there. And sometimes you have trouble, like early games, so that's why I run too. Then we got uh, Satellite Constellar uh, Diamond. Basically, he negates, like this is, it was basically made to go against Shadows because this was Duel's Alliance format where... Burning Abyss, Shadal, and Satellar Knights were, you know, they were the top three. It was amazing format, by the way, until Necros came. But this just negates all the darks, basically. It's a fantastic card. And then for the generic, uh, well, not generic rank force yet, but while well, we play Castell, Silent Arc, Cowboy, uh, you know, as our generics, uh, this guy, uh, Starlight, I'm not even going to pronounce his name. You detach, and then... Uh, you negate an effect, or you negate a monster, you turn to zero attack, uh, and the effect's negated. When it's removed from the field, you draw a card, so it kind of does pay for itself a little bit. Uh, then we got uh, the Bujin. This basically, don't even read it. Uh, if you have one card in your hand and you can pitch it, you make him, you detach, you discard your whole hand, and you draw two cards. He's pretty useful to deck then especially. I like making him. Uh, he comes in clutch. And then we have Heroic Champion uh, Roman Gund. He has a lot of effects, I know, but you can. He's a warrior only, and I've made him with five materials. It negates your opponent from summoning, activating spells and traps here. Uh, yeah. So you could destroy all cards your opponent controls if it has five, and it's already it's a three thousand attack right when it hits the field if you just have two materials and you detach. I think on your opponent's end phase or your end phase. I forgot which. Um. Man, uh, your opponent's end phase. I'm so smart, guys. I know my own cards. Uh, and then for the last card, we just played the new card. Hip, I'm not even going to... Pimp Star, that's all I'm going to call it. Uh, he's basically like the Miss Radiant, but for lights. Uh, you make him, he's cool. And that's really it. Anyway, guys, this is... Uh, what's called? This has been a Stone Knight deck profile. I don't have a side deck, uh, really, because I'm fixing it up. And, you know, this meta is changing. We got the new ban list soon. But uh, I do always keep uh, two Genesis in the side deck. I just want to mention that real quick. Only because it's spell and trap removal. But instead of twin sisters and going neg one. Since you're filling up the field. You can just have this set. You know. You you made your combo. They're going to wait to strike your. Uh, they're they're going to wait to strike. You know. Your Deltros or Trevor. So. When you have three. You flip this over. It's great. Anyway guys. This has been. Uh, the first deck profile team Sakurasu makes. Sorry that this was a little bit rushed and a little bit unedited and a little bit uh, too much stutterings and us. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is my first time making my deck profile, so hopefully you guys will be understanding. Hopefully you'll leave a like if you enjoyed, share, and subscribe for more, and we'll see you guys later.